This is the main stage you can check out, but you can never leave. <laughs> awesome. All right. Is it is it time for Didcom? Is that is that what's going on here? It's definitely Didcom's at time. All right. So uh, Didcom was invoked. Oh, I, I figured out the Kalia thing. Watch this. Uh, she did it on accident. I figured out what she did on purpose. So if you if you hit present up here, just normally, it takes over your whole screen, and that doesn't work well if you want to like maintain a list of things to the side. If you click the little thing and go to presenter view, what you see is that the window turns into the, pre the, the, the stuff like this, and then it also pops open another presenter window to the side that lets you like see a preview of like the next and previous slides and stuff. So, so Kalia, you're awesome. Uh, if I tried hard enough, I could like, you know, just show, share this square, but I'm, I'm being mildly lazy, so I'm not going to bother with that. But um, I am Sam Curran, and uh, I am one of the co-chairs of the um, of the DIDCOM working group at the DIFF. Um, there's been a couple of mentions. Uh, the, the, the DIDCOM work has um, origins uh, a while ago in the ARIES group. Um, that's significant for two reasons. One is, is that we're working on, uh, you'll hear version two uh, in what we're talking about, and we've, we have sort of dubbed the, the, the ARIES work as version one, uh, and the, this work is version two in order to differentiate them. Uh, one of the nice things there is that version one is more than an idea. It's been, it's been working in its use in production applications today, um, and the, the improvements that we're making with, with V2 are pretty awesome and significant. So um, later on, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll highlight some of those things that are actually different between one and two. Um, so let me get in and explain uh, what, uh, what DIDCOM actually is. And I usually use this diagram to do so. The, the, uh, we have DIDs and, and, and they resolve to DID documents. Uh, the idea with DIDCOM is that it uh, is that it lies on top of uh, the features provided in did, DIDs and DID documents, and then um, and then allows for the development of protocols on top of that that kind of ride on the the, the structure um, and and the, the compatibility of the DIDCOM layer itself. Um, there are some parallels here, um, you know, with uh, with uh, like HTTP and REST being DIDCOM, and then uh, you know like RESTful interfaces being the the different APIs that are defined on top of that. Um, so uh, the, the focus of this working group is in fact this DIDCOM layer and building enough in here to support the development of protocols, but it's not within the charter of the group to, to be involved in the creating of all those protocols. Indeed, um, protocols can actually be created without permission or registration anywhere. Um, um, and you can achieve interoperability with that uh, just by you know, communicating uh, you know, with the other parties that also support that protocol. And I'll talk about that in a second. I've got a new diagram to add to the mix and I, and I did this to it. Um, uh, DIDCOM is really about communicating between two parties. And so they each have a DID and, and, and a DID document. Um, and, and then DIDCOM forms this, uh, this common layer uh, in between them that, um, that enables uh, that communication to actually occur. Um, and so I kind of like this one because of the, the sort of the shift in focus um, and, and making it clear that this enables communication between two parties. So this isn't a software stack so much as this is a protocol uh, that, uh, that allows for, it's, it's like a meta protocol or a base level protocol that allows for all sorts of awesome stuff to happen. Um, so so why, why would you use DIDCOM instead of, instead of uh, roll your own uh, protocol for whatever you're trying to do? Uh, there's lots of things that people are trying to do and trying to make it happen. Uh, what does DIDCOM add and what does it really have? Um, it offers security uh, independent of the transport. Um, uh, and so it doesn't matter how, and I'll talk about transports in a minute, but it doesn't matter which transport you're using, you have the same security guarantees. And that's a little different um, in the web, we often have security that's bound specifically to the transport. Um, it also gives you a foundational layer of interoperability. There, uh, uh, in one of those is the next point here is that we have feature discovery. Um, when you are communicating uh, over DIDCOM, there are a very few uh, protocols that actually exist in, in, in the core spec itself. And one of them allows you to ask the other party for uh, the, the types of features that they support and they can disclose some of those to you. And that means that um, particularly in a world where we're going to be moving from uh, earlier versions of protocols to later versions or, or, or new ones that show up on the, on the scene and, uh, and there's a built-in mechanism to discover which protocols are shared in common between two parties and, and engage in those uh, protocols. Um, the, DIDCOM is repudiable by default, um, and non-repudiation is supported uh, with, it, with, uh, with added signatures. The, the benefit here is that 
um, you can you can always add non-repudiation. You can't actually take it away. And so we wanted to support both, and and uh, and that's uh, and that's what we've come up with. Um, the uh, the other one that I really want to highlight, I, I don't want to read all the things on my slides here, but the last one is really important. Uh, Didcom is mobile and offline friendly. It is a message-oriented uh, uh, protocol, and those messages mean uh, that they can be uh, they held or communicated um, in, in different places um, that make it uh, easier to develop for mobile apps or, or even uh, you know, IoT devices that are not always online um, or, or things of that nature. And so uh, Didcom is very friendly for that use case. It is not an RPC model, as we're familiar with most web, uh, you know, web APIs. Um, and, and as such works really well, not only between you know, in the traditional client server world where uh, where you have sort of a, a highly available property and someone, a, a user communicating with those, but also works really well between uh, two, two users in a peer to peer manner. Uh, and so there, uh, that's one of the main differences between Didcom and, and, and something like um, like an RPC protocol or, or RESTful interfaces is that um, is that in Didcom, everyone's a peer, uh, even if you one of those peers happens to be connected with a highly available service or something else. Um, so Didcom uh, is doesn't have uh, it doesn't lean on the transports for that security, but there are a variety of transports uh, that with defined usage, um, and there's uh, there's four that I want to mention. Uh, the first one is obviously the HTTP family. Uh, that's really common. We're very familiar with it. There's lots of library support for that. And so one of the transports for, for Didcom messages is, uh, is using HTTP. And WebSockets are another really common one, uh, particularly in the mobile use case. Um, we can open a socket and send multiple messages over that socket. Um, there's a lot of work going on right now to define the, 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 the um, the best way to communicate Didcom message, messages over Bluetooth. And this is fantastic because it allows for um, parties that uh, either have never connected online or have connected online but are in close proximity to each other to actually ex exchange messages over, over Bluetooth, um, which has some very desirable security properties um, and, uh, and also works really, really well in a variety of use cases where, where internet is not available. Um, this could be refugee use cases or, or other offline use cases where uh, you know, reliance on the internet to shuttle messages back and forth is just not practical. Um, we also have uh, support uh, for um, QR encoded messages. This is particularly important if you're trying to create a um, if you're trying to create a connection with someone else and you need to exchange um, uh, you need to exchange the uh, like a first initial handshake with someone um, in, in order to uh, in order to get the party started. And so there's there's that use case, but the, it also supports the the communication of any type of messages. This would commonly be done uh, by scanning a QR code off of one device from another one. Uh, Bluetooth can also be used here, and there's been some investigation into NFC uh, for the same use case. Um, but one of the default ways of sort of getting that going is in fact scanning a QR code, and so and so that works well. Um, so um, uh, I have a, a slide here for what's new in version two. If you're familiar with the Aries work or you uh, were tuned into the, the early part of the V2 work, um, some of these may, uh, may be familiar or may be new. Um, the, one of the big changes between V1 and V2 is, is movement towards basing it on standards track dependencies. In V1, for the sake of expediency, we, uh, we, we took some things that were um, deviations from the standard in order to make them work and demonstrate that this in fact was a viable approach. Um, and um, and uh, this, is, uh, this is being cleaned up, if you will, in V2, which will be really great um, with, uh, with standards track things. Um, it's moving fast enough that we don't, uh, those standards track things are not all complete, um, but they are progressing nicely and, and we're pretty happy about that. Um, we have a model uh, that, you, that allows you to communicate meaningful messages on the first exchange rather than having to go through a handshake protocol as was required in, in V1. Um, this has been talked about zero round trip um, that uh, you, you're, able to, um, you're able to say stuff right away with making that happen. And, and, and that change, that was a long discussion in the group, but actually resulted in some, in some really beautiful things that, that uh, I believe will, will significantly um, simplify what's in uh, the use of V2. 
Um, there's some, uh, we use uh, headers in, in, a, in our JWM message versus decorators in V1. That'll only make sense if you're a V1 um, familiar. Um, return route uh, functions as an extension now instead of part of the, the main spec. Um, return route is a, is a useful piece when you are uh, developing uh, agents that can communicate directly with mobile apps or other disconnected uh, type of things or, or you know, things behind firewalls. Um, and uh, the problem with that in the main spec is that it, um, it only applies to last mile message delivery typically. And so uh, including in the main spec was a complicating factor and handling it as an extension allows for all the goodness we had before without any uh, conflict with what non last mile people are expected to do. Um, another major change in V1, we had what we called authcrypt and a noncrypt. Authcrypt is a way of sending the message with and, and including um, because of authenticated encryption, which is short for, um, you know, uh, cryptographic confidence of who sent the message in addition to the, the fact that the message was encrypted. And we also had uh, a method called a non-crypt, which, uh, which uh, eliminated the, the, the proof of who you are. And uh, we realized in the middle there that we have uh, ephemeral uh, did methods like uh, peer did and others um, that uh, effectively provide the same type of a thing, but with more flexibility. Uh, with, uh, with a non-crypt, there was no way to tie a series of messages together um, so that you could have maybe a, 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 a several message interaction rather than just a single message interaction. And if you are able to, um, if you choose to use something like a peer did um, for that ephemeral connection, that that connection or that uh, relationship can exist for as long as uh, both parties agree to, um, which can be really nice. And so uh, for simplicity, we've actually eliminated the uh, non-crypt option, um, which simplifies the implementation um, and uh, in, in relies upon the various uh, attributes of, of, uh, of community did methods in order to, uh, to get the same effect. So it got simpler at the same time and, and also more flexible. Um, we're also adding an implementation guide. Uh, the spec itself um, will be uh, focused on normative text, um, but there's, uh, for, for deeper understanding and commentary, there's an implementation guide that, that helps explore those things that are best explained in a non-normative way. And so that is another uh, uh, effort going on uh, at the same time as the development of the V2 spec. So everyone wants to know, well, when, when's it done? Um, um, when is this uh, cake baked? Uh, the spec is largely in place. We're discussing uh, important pieces of it, um, but uh, a good sign that it's largely in place is that we actually have implement, uh, we have code implementations that are beginning. Um, and we have later in, these, in the schedule, let me flip over here real quick. There is a DIDCOM demos in the secondary uh, channel in this block here. Um, however, it uh, lines up with your uh, with your schedule. Um, you can find that in the, in the same spreadsheet link um, that will uh, will have some beginning demos of beginning uh, code implementations. Um, there are uh, the charter of our working group allows for for very targeted and specific code and test suites uh, to be uh, related to the group. Um, we are not under charter to uh, to host code that uh, designs a larger piece of, of software or or a, a full agent or other didcom communicating software so we will not be doing that um, but there are other places for that to occur and uh, and we will be able to have reference code implementation or very narrowly focused libraries as, as part of, uh, of part of what the working group produces um, the implementation guide is also growing um, you know as we discover areas of misunderstanding uh, then then additional sections are, uh, are are working on being added there um, and so that's the bulk of this. Um, we uh, would love you to join us. Um, and uh, this is uh, the reason this slide is a little redundant here is that it's often uh, given to non-diff focus groups. Um, but uh, join us on in the DIDCOM working group on the diff Slack. There's also uh, links to the, we have a rendered version of the spec that, that comes out of the, um, the GitHub repository. And, and we are now maintaining our agenda in, uh, in GitHub as well. And so, uh, and so you can see that, uh, that as well. Um, and we have weekly calls on Mondays, um, unless you live on the other side of the dateline and then it's on Tuesday morning. So um, I feel like I'm lying to them every time I say, hey, welcome to Monday, because it isn't really Monday for them. But what are you going to do? Um, so uh, that's uh, that's it real quick. Um, I'm about at time. Um, and I think after this, we have a spot for a couple of minutes of questions. 
if you are curious or if I didn't explain something well, I would love to, to do my best to answer anything you've got. And that, that's all I got. Um, re real quick before we get to audience questions, uh, the, is, do I remember correctly that the Bluetooth project is spinning up as a work item of a separate work item of the group that meets independently? Yes, it has sense. been. Um, uh, there was a less formality in the creation of that. They said, hey, we'd like to do this. And everyone said, yeah. And then we never sort of went through the formal process. So I think it is officially being recognized okay. as a work item of the group. Um, and uh, they're doing fantastic work over there. I'm super grateful that the, that they are. Uh, I'm not the central to that conversation, um, but but everything that I've seen that they've produced has been really well thought through and very well put together. And I'm, and I'm grateful for that. Um, with that does intend, we do intend that to land back in the spec um, because having that standardized will be an incredibly valuable thing. So yeah, I feel I feel um, uh, obligated procedurally to make the announcement that um, if maybe just hypothetically, if you were musing in the chat during the DidCom presentation that. Um, this should get done in the NFC too, or you want to help the Bluetooth team, these things are sort of parallel work streams. So if you want to work uh, on the NFC thing and have some sort of prototype for the main group to fold back into a future version of the spec over time, uh, just uh, come, come to my session at the end of the day on starting new work items and uh, get cracking. I mean, you can, I am glad to put people in touch when I know off the top of my head, the names of people working on problem areas. Um, so yeah, I'm seeing multiple people in the in this room right now that work on NFCs and DIDCOM, so NFC protocols and DIDCOM. So maybe that could also be an independent work item. Maybe. We would love that. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to get the share link here so that I can uh, so I can copy this and I'll drop it in the chat. And I don't know if there's uh, anywhere else um, that uh, that we can make that happen. So. So that's very cool. Um, yes, so uh, this this is going to be the year of DIDCOM in the sense that, uh, that we have implementations. Um, the ARIES group is also um, uh, very interested in making, um, uh, making the transition from V1 to V2 as it becomes available. And that's, uh, there's, there's actually a transition guide in the implementer's guide that talks about what's necessary to actually do that. Um, there's some work going on, on right now in the ARIES working group. To, uh, to make that transition easier with some precursory changes that they're, they're going to be making in the next few months so that when that arrives, it'll be, it'll be uh, easy to, to transition and speak those, so. Yes. Um, yes, uh, Steve, uh, there, is a, there, there will be a REST conversation um, happening. There's a REST panel about how awesome REST is now. Um, and there's um, later on in, in this, uh, uh, this demo time, uh, there will be also discussion in this DIDCOM demos, uh, there will be REST-based implementations there as well. So REST all over the place. Uh, any questions? I either put everyone to sleep or I astounded everybody. I'm gonna pretend it's the second, even though it's probably the first. We were awake. What was that? We are awake. You did I enjoyed your presentation. Well, good, It's it's been good and I'm excited for the future this brings. I'm particularly excited that it is not client server by nature, um, that it allows for um, more peer relationships, uh, not just between people, but even a, even a more of a peer relationship between, let's say me and an and, and institution of some kind that I am uh, connecting with, be it my grocery store or a local government or, or whatever. Um, and I, I like that it's oriented that direction instead of being primarily a client server uh, uh, system and architecture. Uh, Sam, there's a question from Adam about uh, interfacing to the IDA and walk ID. Yes, uh, session later today. Um, I have uh, the, the, that isn't something that we have discussed yet, uh, but we sure could. Um, 
and uh, part of the the hard part of developing standards like this is the is the the uh, um, the lack of coordination in the timeline. Meaning, often there's parallel work items that could depend on each other, but they sort of don't because of how they were grown. Um, and our, it, we're at this point we're focused on trying to get this um, nailed down as soon as we can, uh, so that uh, so that discussions like that are actually easier to have. Um, so so yes. Um, yeah, excellent. Uh, that might be a good conversation for the uh, for the interop working group as well. Uh, Juan. Yes, yes, duly noted. Um, the there's a PID conference next week that I'm going to, and I'm very curious about the ORCID did uh, interface, but the IDOS did interface. Uh, I'd recommend the side session by uh, Javier from Validated ID in half an hour or an hour. Uh, he's talking about X509. Yeah, there you go. Bringing X509 into VC ecosystems. That is, uh, I, I, that is a report out from an IDOS interoperability project um, and uh, an authoritative one, <laughs> I would say. Uh, so that, that should be helpful. Um, and I know there are many, many European projects that are very interested in DITCOM, particularly here in um, um, Germany, where I live. Uh, so yeah, that is, that is definitely something a lot of teams are working on. A lot of DIFF member orgs uh, have some opinions about. Uh, and it's all sort of pending the, the coming IDAS, uh, the new specifications and, and regulations coming in the next month or two. Awesome. Cool. I, I want to um, compliment and congratulate Sam for a perfect 15 minute presentation. <laughs> yeah. that, that was just the right amount of information at just the right speed. <laughs> well, perhaps the perfect length. <laughs> <laughs> if only I could get the rest of it perfect. <laughs> So yeah, we, we have some more we have some more time. Do people have just um, you know uh, general didcom or interop questions? They don't have to be about what we presented. They can just be about I don't know the future. Feel free to raise your hand or just unmute yourself. I will offer a question that I've heard in a lot of other places and, and proffer an answer there. Um, there are a number of protocols developed in the ARIES community that ride on top of DIDCOM. Uh, so there's credential exchange, uh, there's things like basic message, there's, uh, there's other types of protocols that have been developed on top of that that are in fact out of the scope of, that wor uh, of this uh, working group at the DIFF. The question is, is what happens to those? Um, and uh, the short answer is that uh, is that protocols can be developed by any community, um, and uh, that's by design with how DIDCOM is organized. And so um, the uh, the the point there is that um, those won't uh, be happening in this group, but can happen as appropriate in any groups that you desire to organize. Um, it's, uh, it, we are trying to set it up so that Ari the ARIES community can continue to use the protocols they've become comfortable with moving forward on top of V2. Um, and as interest grows in those or similar protocols, uh, discussions are started that, uh, that, that those uh, protocols can be designed and, um, and uh, discussed in those appropriate groups. Um, you know, for example, there are credential exchange protocols in use in Aries now. Those could be discussions of a, of a credential focused working group um, that, uh, that, that is discussing things of protocol matters and that would be an appropriate place for that to happen. Um, and there's no permission needed to start those. Um, and there is some assistance we could probably give um, that we're totally willing to do so but uh, um, but those will not be happening due to the charter um, that we had, care had carefully crafted that will not be happening in this working group. So if you want those things to happen and grow, then um, 
then then th those might be th things that you can engage in or begin with um, and uh, and figure that out. Some of these things were born in Aries, not because they were trying to be kept in Aries, but because there wasn't any place at the time to have those conversations. Um, and as the as larger communities get interested in things, I think expanding those discussions and finding the right home for them is excellent. May I ask so, a question? Yes, please. Thank you. This is Luca Bolderin from InfoCert. Well, I, I was involved in a discussion related to the uh, <clears throat> central bank digital currency. And in that situation, it happens that there are uh, transactions for payments between uh, holders of, uh, of uh, wallets of, uh, of yeah, currency. And uh, the, the exchange of uh, this payment is, have, has to be linked to identities. So there's an ongoing discussion on how to perform these transactions, like transporting money uh, connected to the identity of the sender and the recipient. There has been some investigation in this field and I'm aware of a proposal using uh, Xades structures, which is extension of XML digital signature. But there was a lot of interest in the possibility of adapting um, a verifiable credential, verifiable presentations, uh, well, or something on top of, say, this uh, uh, sub sovereign identity constructs, since you need to transport not only identity, but often you need to transport some data about the payer or the payee. Um, I wonder whether there has already been, uh, this might happen, be considered kind of a protocol to be implemented off top of DIDCOM. This was my understanding. I wonder whether there's already protocols uh, which involve uh, money transaction on DIDCOM or if it's something that has to be invented. Thank you. Um, there have been brief conversations about, um, about how to support that uh, from a, um, from a protocol view in the Aries ecosystem, but they, they are not super well developed. Um, I think the development of protocols to coordinate the transfer of money and the various types of information that are important in those interactions would be an excellent thing to build on top of DIDCOM. Um, I, I would love, for example, if I have a DIDCOM connection with someone, I can engage in multiple protocols with them. I could say, play chess with them. If I'm inviting them to the, my, my house, I might be able to query them for, for food allergies that they have. And, um, and, and also, uh, you know, if, if they agreed to pick up some food supplies on the way, I might want to pay them for that. Um, and, uh, and that would be, um, uh, that would be an excellent thing to engage in, um, or, or, you know, uh, and of course, all the other options, you know, I buy food at a store or I'm at a restaurant and I want to pay for those things. Um, being able to enable those protocols, I think, would be uh, absolutely fantastic. Um, this is a if I already have a way to communicate securely with someone, give a didcom, then uh, then then uh, enabling payments to occur over a, a protocol that sits on top of that uh, is, a, is, a, is excellent. Thank you. So. So not, not a ton of work yet, but I think that that is a, a ripe opportunity and, and would fit really, really well um, within this. Um, DIDCOM itself does not require the exchange. The, the foundational protocol does not require the exchange of, of uh, credentials. But in practice, you need to exchange enough credentials to gain the, the trust necessary for the interaction. That may be very little if you're playing a pickup game of chess, you know, digital chess, as if you're sitting across from someone in a park. Um, it may be quite a lot if you are trying to engage in maybe like a property purchase or some other uh, significant thing. And so uh, exchanging credentials over at EDCOM can establish the necessary trust in the relationship and then, uh, and then uh, being able to uh, act within that framework of trust in the exchange of money, uh, I think would be fantastic. Thanks for the question, that was good. And we're at time, so I will be quiet. <laughs> Uh, well, uh, w how, how can people reach you if they ha have more questions? I'm noticing there's a lot in chat. Uh, I think we ran out of time. We can, uh, so there's diff Slack, of course. <laughs> uh, I'm Telegram Sam everywhere, on Twitter, uh, on GitHub, and, um, and everywhere else. Um, so if you reach out to me, I will do my best to get back. Uh, Diff Slack is probably a really great spot. Uh, you can, uh, the, the, uh, the working group channel is good, or you can message me directly, and I'd love to help any way I can. Um, so, 
uh, claims and creden 